Most people believe that obedience is a virtue. However, obedience may not be the best when participating in events that could become confrontational or cause harm. Obedience usually refers to behaviors that foster the willingness to follow or participate in requested actions. Nevertheless, to better understand obedience, we should begin with the two most prevalent forms of obedient behaviors. With a better understanding of these two types of obedient behaviors, we can clearly see how obedience can become questionable in engagements we often find ourselves in that are supposed to keep society functioning reliably and safely. Let's now examine these two types of obedient behaviors. And welcome to Four C's One Family. In this presentation, let's briefly detail the two forms of obedient behaviors most people will encounter during their lives. Constructive obedience. Jian shi xing fu chong. Constructive obedience outside religion refers to the willingness to follow behaviors, laws, and instructions that encourage cultural or social harmony. Constructive obedience involves actions taken during events considered normal or mutually acceptable. One example of constructive obedience is when highway maintenance workers repair damaged roads while several other uniformed co-workers direct drivers in approaching vehicles to slow down and modify their approach to protect other workers and drivers. Another example is when a natural disaster occurs, such as an earthquake or flood. Emergency service personnel are directed to assist citizens, especially in hard-hit areas, in taking steps to maintain and enhance their health and security. In most situations, constructive obedience doesn't jeopardize the relationship between the general public and authority. In a nutshell, constructive obedience occurs when rules that everyone must follow are promoted to enhance coexistence. How constructive obedience is implied in your country or nation, and what are some responses you have observed? Constructive obedience can easily create situations that cause individuals to become unable to initiate beneficial actions without hesitation or the presence of an authoritative figure. Destructive obedience. You or someone you know has undoubtedly displayed destructive obedience simply because you were willing to accomplish a goal set out for you to achieve by someone you admired or a group you wanted to join or remain a member of. Destructive obedience can also explain an individual's or group's willingness to commit detrimental, illegal, or immoral requests. So at this point, Destructive obedience appears to be the opposite of constructive obedience. Now, don't jump to conclusions. Why do people we consider ordinary and polite do immoral, unjust, and illogical things that collide with their philosophical and religious beliefs? It's easy to find examples throughout history of how destructive obedience led to the imprisonment and mistreatment of often innocent members of society considered a danger or against the norms of the person or group in power. Destructive obedience accelerates conflict and inequalities through conflicting political ideologies, disorganized governments, high illiteracy rates, revenge, opposed religions, and superstitions. Destructive obedience, which is often camouflaged or interpreted as a version of constructive obedience, overrides decision-making processes of those responsible for carrying out a request or order that they disagree with or know isn't in the best interests of another person or group. One example would be when a head chef orders an apprentice to substitute a healthy, high-quality ingredient with a much cheaper, less quality, and above all, unhealthy ingredient. To keep their position and be a good assistant, the apprentice will follow the head chef's instructions while knowing 
what was requested is wrong. Another example involves the possible taking of a life while engaged in a war. Soldiers responsible for flying drones and firing missiles are occasionally ordered to destroy targets, which may include the taking of a life. All soldiers are aware of the actions they may be requested to take, and they also understand that enemy soldiers are also aware of the role they must also play in a war. Another example is very much like a situation in a war, where it involves the taking of unarmed civilian lives because of a group or influential leaders prophesized divisions, religion, political or tribal beliefs. Those who carry out the request of these groups and leaders often become overwhelmed with emotions that numb them while engaged in activities to degrade, suppress, or in some cases, eliminate requested targets and people. One well-known event occurred during World War II between 1941 and 1945, when German Nazi soldiers under the orders of their leader and enablers gathered, interrogated, and killed around two-thirds of Europe's Jewish population and other people considered undesirables. Events like these didn't only occur in Western nations. Similar events occurred in African and Asian countries. In 1994, from April 7th to July 15th, during the Rwandan Civil War, Militant members of the Hutu tribe slaughtered up to 800,000 individuals of the minority Tutsi and Batwa tribes, as well as moderate members of their Hutu tribe, during a 100-day long or so killing spree with no international intervention. This was a low-tech massacre mainly carried out using long knives, machetes, and spears. What other groups of people, islands, and nations will have their rights crushed and lives taken away by those who have considerable influence and power over them. Even today, the international community and political world elites aren't firmly ready to intervene and effectively prevent and hold those responsible for mass atrocities and abuse of human rights. We must ask ourselves why there is little international interest in protecting people in certain parts of the world. Would the world once again look the other way and allow atrocities to continue? If peacekeepers really do exist, shouldn't they make their presence known? Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe and download our podcast and remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world because we have a lot more in common than we think.